Hi there folks, this is part two of a demonstration of how to build out a QR registration app using Power Apps, Power Automate, Microsoft Forms and SharePoint Lists. So as a quick recap, I have the Power App on screen right now. I also have my mobile phone open over on the right hand side. And it's this app that I'm going to demonstrate how to build from scratch. Last week, as a recap, what I have is a Microsoft form to allow someone to register. I have a SharePoint list that stores the registrant's details, including an arrival date time. And the registrant will receive an email like so with a QR code that they can present and have scanned via the Power App that we're going to build today. Over on the right hand side, I have my mobile phone. If I select the QR app, I can go and validate a user and validate user will bring up the app and as soon as I point at the screen you can see that it scans the QR code and loads up the details about myself. If I click to activate I'm now registered as being in attendance and if I close that confirmation validate the user once more and scan that QR code you can again see the arrival date and time that of course is all stored in SharePoint. So the details on building out the registration process with the Microsoft form, the list and the Power Automate that sends the email are all in last week's video. Today's video is all about building this Canvas app. So without further ado, let's start building. So here I am in the Maker portal. I'm going to go to Blank App, create a blank Canvas app. We'll go with a phone and we'll give our app a name, the Event Registration and select Create. Now to get things started, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a data source. We'll go into Add Data, choose SharePoint. I'll select the SharePoint connector, one of the connections I've created previously. I have my SharePoint site called QR Demo, and I have a registrants list. And of course, I've covered that list in more detail in the previous demo. So I'll connect that up, and we now have our data source. Back over onto the tree view, what I'd like to do is if I click on the background image here, I'd like to upload an image, in this case, the big conference image. We'll open that up and we'll also change the image position so that it is filling like so. Now, as we build this app, I'm gonna go through some best practices and I'll rename my screen to main screen and then we'll add in our first control, which can be a text label and we can use that as a header. So I'll rename it to LBL header and then as the text value, I'll type in the big conference. So I'm going to change the fill of this to white and then we'll also maybe just increase the text size something slightly larger how about 40 and by using Control and B on my keyboard I can cycle through the different levels of bold that's the sort of level I'm looking for I can stretch and resize that and also set the text alignment to center now I'm going to do exactly the same thing again add in another text label we'll call this the label footer I'll drag that to the bottom. Again, I'm going to change the fill to white. I'm going to stretch this to slightly larger text. I'm going to focus the text to the right hand side in terms of alignment. And if I double click on it, I can actually overwrite the text and I'm going to put in a version number. So version 1.0. And this is quite handy for when you're testing. But I'm also going to add in some padding over on the right hand side. We'll make that 20 and that will bring the text away from the side. So next up, I need to insert the barcode component. So I'll do a quick search here for barcode reader, select that. And if I drag it down to the bottom, we'll center it here. If I select the text over here on the right hand side, I can change it to validate user. I'm gonna change the barcode type to QR code. The scanning mode automatically scan, which is why you saw the app scan the QR code as soon as it saw it. And then next up, I need to create a method for looking up the particular user based on the barcode that's been scanned. So whilst it would be possible to use the various on properties that we have here, the on change or on scan to set a variable, rather than using a variable, I thought about demonstrating how to use PowerFX functions. And the way we do that is we select the app from the top of the, the tree view here, we go to the formulas pane, expand our FX bar here. And if we start with FX to give our formula a name, it's going to be user and it's going to be based on a lookup. And that lookup is looking up our data source, which happens to be our registrants, which is the data source I've attached from SharePoint. We're looking at that registrants where the title is equal to the barcode reader barcodes. Now this is a table of barcodes. 
So actually what we want to do is we want to wrap that in brackets, put first in front of it, which will allow us to get the first record. And of course, we just want the barcode itself. So by adding dot value, we then get that particular barcode. And if I finish things off with a semicolon, we now have our PowerFX formula that we can use throughout our app known as FX user. So next I want to be able to create a pop-up and for that I'm going to use a container. So if I insert a container, just a plain old container, you can see that appear on screen here. I'll drag it into some space and resize it so it's sizable and that's going to house all our controls for our pop-up. Now I'm going to rename it, we'll call it CNT for container and I'll name it Moodle pop-up because that's what it is. It is a Moodle and it is going to pop up. And in there, we're gonna have things like the email address, the name, the date, time. Some other things I'd like to do to this container. I'd like to set a fill color. We'll go with white so it's visible. I'd also like to add in a radius. We'll go with 10 and everyone loves their drop shadow. So let's go with a, a bold there. Now at the moment, this is visible and it's always visible and we have a visible property. If I click on that, you can see it's set to true. We're gonna build out some logic later on that will enable us to hide and show this container, which will have all the details about the user based on whether or not we've scanned a barcode or not. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is to add in three text labels. The first text label I'm gonna rename to LBL email. And of course I want to bring through the email address. So if I go into the text property here, I can bring in the FX user dot email and that will bring through the email address of the current user that's being looked up based on the barcode. But I'd also like to append some text to the front of that. And we can do that in two ways. I'm gonna use the inline method here with a dollar at the start, quotes. And then if I type in email with a colon, a space, and then if we wrap the expression here in curly brackets and then finish it off with quotes, we have our inline concatenation, combining both that string of email with our PowerApps function that we've written using PowerFX. Now to make things easy, I'm gonna select and control C, control V, that'll add in another label. I'll rename this label to name and I can appropriately move it. So we'll move it down a bit. So we have their name there. And the code here, of course, is gonna change slightly. I'm gonna put in dot name. And instead of email, I'm gonna have name, funnily enough, at the beginning of the concatenation here. But what I'd like to happen here for the name is if they're not found, I'd like to have the text appear that a user has not been found. For instance, we've got an invalid barcode um, or for whatever reason, the record has been deleted or something along those lines. But basically, if we go into the expression here, we can type in coalesque with an opening bracket. And what that's gonna do is, it's gonna have a look at the name. And if that is blank, it will return the next value, which is going to be a string. And that string is going to be user not found. Finish it off with quotes and a closing bracket. And you can see already, because the barcode control hasn't got a barcode, it hasn't been able to look up a user, the default here right now is user not found. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move the user to the top and I'll move the email underneath. So finally, I just want a third control. Again, a control C, control V. I've gone with email because it's not as complicated and I'd like to add in the arrival time. So again, I can change that to arrival date time. That's the name of the column on my SharePoint list. And we can call this arrival. And there we have it. We have the beginnings of our modal pop-up. Now for fussy about the spacing, we could select all three of these controls. We can use the control button to select them using the UI here, or you could select them like so over on the tree view. But if you right click, you can then go to a line and we can distribute vertically and that will sort out the spacing based on the top and the bottom one. You might have noticed the middle one adjusted ever so slightly. The last thing I'm gonna do is over on the left hand side, I need to change this label, best practices. So best practices are always three characters at the start to reference the type of control and then a description for that control. So in my original demo, I had a cross at the top right hand corner. That of course was by inserting an icon and the icon in question was the cancel. 
So I can bring that up to the top right hand side there. We can rename it to Ico close and we'll give it a purpose in a minute but it's ultimately going to affect the value of a variable. I also want another icon in this case it's going to be based on a status. It doesn't really matter what icon you pick right now but if we bring that just underneath the arrival time we'll make it slightly bigger. My app remember went red or green depending on whether or not someone had checked in or not. That was all based on a formula so traditionally if you want to change the fill color for instance I want to make it red I can go and supply a fill value. That's a property at the top left, it's called fill. But what we can actually do is we can influence this with an expression. And so what I'm going to do is using if, we're gonna to check to see if that arrival date time is blank. And if it is, we'll say red, i.e. they've not checked in. Otherwise, we'll provide green, i.e. they have checked in. So we're checking to see has the FX user dot arrival date time is it blank if it is blank we're going to say let's output a color of red if it's not blank let's go with a color of green i.e they've checked in and right now you can see it's red the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this because i'm actually going to use this same logic when it comes to determining the icon so we can see if I click on the icon property here, it's currently set to the icon add, but I'm gonna overwrite this. I can paste in that original expression. It will give me an error because it won't like the fact that I've used it enumerations for red and green. But if I type in icon dot, I can use cancel and then a comma and icon dot check. That'll allow us to see if someone has checked in or not with either a cancel, a cross or a check, which is a tick. And again, I'll rename that control to ICO status. So the last control is a button. So make sure you've got the container selected, go to insert and button. And this button of course is going to check someone in. So we can double click on it. We can change the text to check in or validate as, as you require. I'll rename the button to BTN check in and we'll need to do a couple of things on this. So the first is based on on select, which is when someone clicks on that button, we want to patch our data source. So patch with an opening bracket, the registrant's data source. We want to use the FX user, which is the user that's being captured by our user defined function in Power Apps. And then all we want to do is we want to patch the arrival date. So we use the curly brackets, type in arrival date, we can use the expression now, close off the curly brackets, close off the rounded bracket, and there we have our patch expression. If I just expand that, I can also format it. We are patching our registrant's data source using that user that's been captured using our user defined function, and then updating the arrival date time to now. Now, of course, this button is visible whether or not someone has checked in or not. So we also want to influence that by using the visibility property. And there is this visible, it's set to true by default, but we can use some logic. So based on if the arrival date time is blank, so again, fx user dot arrival date time, if it's blank, then we could show it, but we also want to ensure that the barcode value is not blank. So again, the fx user dot title in this case, is not blank. So the logic behind this is this button will only show if the arrival date time is blank and we've also got someone's barcode back. So the final piece of the puzzle is how are we gonna make this Moodle pop-up appear and disappear based on either someone hitting this cross at the top right or selecting this button here so that we can scan a barcode. Well, it's all going to be using a variable. I mentioned at the beginning that based on this particular container, there is a visibility property. If we click on that, it's currently set to true. I'm going to set this to a variable. The way that we do this is if I select the barcode control here, there is a property for on scan. And every time someone scans, what I want to do is I want to update a local variable using update context. I'll put in a curly bracket here. It's local, so we abbreviate it with LOC for local. We'll call it visible. 
and then we'll set the value to true, closing curly bracket, closing round bracket here. And of course, every time someone clicks on that, it's going to set the LOC visible variable to true. If I copy that, control C, click on the cross here on the on select for our close, I'll paste that in. But rather than setting it to true, I'm going to set it to false. And so when someone clicks across, it will set the variable to false. It will then hide this container. But how does it hide the container? Well, if I select the container now, go to visible rather than using true. If I type in LOC visible, you'll see that that container has disappeared because now it will only appear when I hit the validate user and attempt to scan. And of course, when I hit the cross, it will disappear. Now, of course, I can't test this app in the canvas here in the maker portal, I'll need to go and download it on my mobile phone. So why don't we give that a go and see if it's worked. So armed with my mobile again, I'm over in the SharePoint list. If I just go into edit, I'm going to remove the current arrival date and time from the beginning of the video. We'll save that over into my email. Now, if I jump onto my app, the event registration, you can see it on screen. If I hit the validate user, instantly it scanned the QR code. You can see there's some slight changes I need to make maybe to the layout because the uh, text here is struggling in the small control that I've created. But if I hit the check in, I've checked in, the button has disappeared. I can hit the cross top right. And again, I can validate a new user. And of course, I'm still checked in. But if I decided to go and validate an invalid barcode, like the one I have here on my Brussels pass, you can see the user is not found. And because we have no barcode registered on our SharePoint list, there is no button to go and check that user in. So hence the logic to show and hide the button during the build of the app. So there we have it. The end to end process has now been built. We've learned how to build a Power Automate in the first video that will enable you to register users via Microsoft Form. They'll of course get a QR code sent via email. And then in today's video, we've built out the Power App that validates that user based on their QR code and the registration that was taken via our Microsoft form. So please do let me know in the comments if this has helped you with your solution. And as always, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you sometime soon. Cheers.